good Python practices, naming things is hard. In this video, I'm going to be explaining why naming something in programming is very difficult. I'm going to be demonstrating how we can name our variables correctly. I'm also going to be demonstrating how we can write our code in a way that explains the purpose and intention of our code. So why is naming things in programming extremely difficult? Well, one thing can mean many things. This means that context and consistency is key. You should also avoid mixing opposites. So don't say begin and end or finish and start. These opposites shouldn't be mixed in your code. You should name your methods to explain what they do. And you should name your classes for how they are implemented. And lastly, the variables that you write should be named for what they represent. So the first example I'm going to be demonstrating is naming conventions for variables. So in this example, what we're doing is we're finding the current date. However, on line eight, we have a variable which is called N. Now, N doesn't mean anything at all. It's just a letter in the alphabet. It has no meaning, no connotation. When a developer is reading this code, they're not going to know what N represents. This was a point I made earlier that you should name your variables to what they represent. So naming a variable as N doesn't mean anything whatsoever. A better example is to rename the variable of N to current underscore date. Because not only are you saying that this variable is a date, but it is the current date. So as a programmer, I'm going to know exactly what is assigned to this variable. We should also use the same naming conventions when we are dealing with parameters in functions and methods. So in this bad example, we have a function of get underscore page, and we're passing in the parameter of u. So at a glance, I don't know what u actually represents. A better example is to name the parameter to what is represented by the value that you're supplying to that function. In this case, we're supplying the URL and therefore the parameter is called URL. Now in later versions of Python, you can also put through different data types as well. So you can define whether they are strings, whether they are booleans, whether they are dictionaries and so forth. That is also extremely helpful when you're reading code and you're deciding what are the inputs and the outputs of your functions. As I've mentioned before, naming things in programming is extremely difficult. And one thing you can do to help yourself out is to be consistent with your naming conventions. So here we have a bad example of three different calls to various things to do with a product. We have get underscore prod, get underscore p underscore stock, get underscore record underscore product. So at a glance, I'm not going to know what get underscore record underscore product does compared to get underscore prod. I don't even know if prod represents a product. I certainly don't know that get underscore p underscore stock means that that is stock of a product because I don't know what p means. A better example is to name the domains that we're using within our application. So for example, we have get underscore product. I know exactly what that is going to do. It is going to get the product. We also have get underscore product underscore stock. That tells me I'm going to get the stock of the product. Get underscore product underscore record will get me the record from the database of the product. Now later in this course, I'm going to be explaining the inconsistency issues you might come across when dealing with functions. But in this example, I just want to explain that function names should say precisely and exactly what they are doing and indicate what they are going to be returning. So in this bad example, we have a class called validation. This class has a method called handle. Now handle has a value and a max. These are the parameters that can be supplied. And this is returning false if the max value 
is greater than the value that is supplied. However, the function name is just called handle. It's certainly not indicating what is going to be returned. Instead, what we should be having is a function name that represents what is going on in that function. It should say the intention of that function. In this case, we have is underscore valid. So this is saying that it is valid or it is not valid because the word is will either be or won't be true. So we know before even looking at the return type that this is going to return a Boolean, true or false. Again, it's supplying the value and the max as parameters, and we know that it's going to be returning false because it is called is underscore valid. 